Hey everyone! In this video, I'm going to show you how to compute a sample size based off of a given margin of error and a confidence level and a proportion, maybe un or unknown. So first of all, um, the overall goal is to compute n, or maybe we'll say estimate n because we would give you a setup of a question like at a 99% confidence level, we need to have a margin of error that's specified at, I don't know, let's say 2% in this example. And somehow we know that maybe through a prior study that there's a value for your sample proportion that is 0.3. So we, our goal is to compute n and we have all these facts. So we're gonna use our margin of error formula. So margin of error, is equal to a z star, and this is all for proportion of formulas for estimating sample sizes for averages or standard deviations, they have different formulas. So we take our margin of error formula, z star, times the square root of p hat times one minus p hat divided by n. So this is where it all starts, and now we can use a little bit of algebra to solve for n. So what do we do to get rid of a square root? we square both sides of an equation. So that would leave us with e squared, or error squared, is equal to z squared. I'm gonna leave off the star for right now, just to make it a little less cluttered. And squaring a square root just gets us back to p hat times one minus p hat divided by n. Now the goal is to solve for n, but n is in the denominator. So if we're using algebra, we would multiply both sides of this equation by n divide both sides of the equation by e squared, so we're solving for n. So that yields n is equal to z squared divided by e squared times p hat times one minus p hat. Sometimes it's not necessarily a hat that's given in the equation. Sometimes it is a p sub g to mean that it's a, it's a guess. Sometimes we don't know anything about proportions and it's like, this is the equation that's, or this is the facts that's given to you. You don't know anything about your proportion. So when P hat is unknown, P hat unknown, you use P hat equals 0.5. That's because the worst case scenario is that your options for the probability of success are 50-50. So what ends up happening is you get the largest possible sample size. To get a smaller sample size, you hope to have a guess. And um, that can be explained by looking at a square, a square that has the same sides, uh, same length of sides, gives you the biggest area. But let's say you have a rectangle that has 0.7 and 0.3 by making one side smaller and thus the other side larger, you end up with a smaller area. This is the maximum area that you can have in a square. Anytime you change the sides to be not equal, then you get a smaller number, but that's a digression. Okay, here we are. Here's our formula for N. So this is what you can write down in your notes. And then you can also write, no, write down, if P hat is unknown, use P hat equal to 0.5. All right, so I'm gonna use these facts, 99% confidence level. That means that our Z star value or Z value or Z score, so the Z score that puts 99% area in the middle of a distribution, like that, 0.99 is 2.576. So let's put, plug in what we know into this equation n is equal to 2.576 squared divided by 0 0.02 squared. Notice that we use 0 0.02 as the proportion. It's not percent sign. We have need to use decimals. So I've converted percents to decimals. And then plug in our proportions, 0.3 times 0 0.7. I did one minus 0.3 in my head. All right, so when we do this, I've already worked it off to the side, I get 3,483.78. So what we do 
traditionally with sample sizes when we were trying to figure them out, is we always round down to get to the next smallest number because we can't sample 78 hundredths of a person. We can only sample full people. So three, four, eight, three would be your sample size. Okay, so this is all great if you knew to use 2.576 for your z-score. What happens if you used, this is a little aside, z equals 2.58 because you're like, oh, that's, I'm just going to round that z-score to two decimal places. We always seem to round to two decimal places. If you used 2.58 for your z-score, you will end up getting n equal to 3494.61. Round that down to 3494. So check this out. You'd need 3,483 people in your sample when z is written out to three decimal places. You'd need 3,494 people, so more people, when you round it up to two decimal places. So if you put these answers in to, let's say your online homework system, you might be marked wrong because literally these are different numbers. Even though relatively you got the right answer, all you did was round your z-score differently. So the catch is to pay attention to how many decimal places the directions say to round out your z-value, or if you can round out z to a whole lot of decimal places. In other words, don't round. Then you'll get the most accurate sample size possible. And then if all else fails, ask your teacher and see what they say. I hope this helps. Bye.